an altar for change. This is one of the practices in Saw's book, Spiritually We. And some of the quotes, so this several weeks that we're working with his book, I'm, all of what's on these slides is really quotes from his upcoming book, which will be published on March 19th. And I'm just choosing some of the practices, some of the juicy bits, I think, out of the book. The whole book is really worth reading and working with. It's quite a deep exploration into the art of relating and connecting from the heart. And when we think about that or we're working with that, a lot of what we're doing is what is in the way of doing that? And a big answer to that is what's in the way of connecting in the heart is our nervous system, our fear, you know, our experiences of being hurt. And one of the ways that we're working with this, one of the main messages in his book is that we can't just be in a bubble of people who think like us and feel like us. And also we want to be careful also you know I know personally the effect of being in a relationship where I was being emotionally abused and how over time that really takes a toll it's not a fairy tale kind of a I need to get along with everybody it might be that we come to the realization that some people we need to have a very firm boundary with some people we might need to set some behavioral boundaries and what he's really working with in this book, and I think is a very deep way to work with this, is how can we keep an open heart at the same time as we're working with difficult people, setting boundaries, working with it on a heart level as well as daily life level. So he's uh, talking about difficult people are like messengers. And in part of that's because they push our buttons. And then we might see there's some things here that I'm not quite clear, I'm not quite free from. And sometimes we wake up and we go, you know, this isn't working for me. I need to get out of this relationship or I need to limit the amount of time if it's family or I need to do this or that. We've normalized some things that actually are not acceptable. And there's this balance, this dance between protecting ourselves and he says the spiritual path will always push us back into the fire. I thought we could do this as a virtual practice together. What he's saying is create an altar and then put the difficult stuff on it and set some intentions around that, do some things around that, and then let it go. So if we think of an altar at home, some of us already have something that we would call an altar. And we're asking to see the person differently. We might also ask to see the situation more clearly and then to actively wish them to be at peace so that they show up in the world in a different way. I think there's two components of that. One is we might not really feel wholeheartedly like we want them to be at peace. So this can be a bit of self-serving like, but if they were at peace, they wouldn't be so difficult to deal with. So we might have a, not a completely open heart around them being at peace even though we can, we know in our mind that that would be very helpful. So that's something that we, like all of this, we work as, as a practice. So he's saying, make a little space for an altar, keep it clean, uncluttered, and then use that as a way to focus your intention. Sometimes I'll, I have a smudge here that I'll start at the beginning of a practice or at the beginning of a day. Some people have a lot of different rituals already that we do. We have rituals of tuning into the breath and the body, for instance, as we do a practice. So this is something that's a little bit more specific physically. We have an altar, we have a location, and we have some objects on that altar. And then we can weave that in. Sometimes we might take something off, we might switch something out. But we gather objects that have some significance. As he says, the holy, the mystery, greater forces. And I would say the flow of life as well. So you could put a photo of the person that you're working with, maybe, or something that reminds you of the situation. A friend of mine uses sometimes sharp shards of crystal to remind her of the sharpness sometimes that can be in relationships. So whatever that might be for you. Then what you do is you write the name of the difficult person or the situation on paper. You either fold it or place it on an envelope light a candle, and then place the paper on the altar. 
We're going to go through this in detail in a few minutes when we actually start to do this. The idea is to surrender the situation and ask for help to see clearly. And then we blow out the candle and let go of consciously controlling the situation. So what it might look like is we light a candle, we have things ready, we put this name of the person onto the altar. And we might do a practice of Tonglen that we did last week where we breathe in the suffering and breathe out relief. We might remind ourselves that they also are a person just like us. They also are suffering. They might be causing a lot of suffering for us as well. Sometimes people will pray for other people. And it's also completely okay to put them out of your mind for a while. We don't have to actively do forgiveness practices. I think forgiveness is something that unfolds through working with the situation, but I'm not really one to jump to forgiveness. So I like to keep that completely out of the situation. But what we're doing with an altar is that we bring them to mind, we ask for the guidance, and then we just see, let it go. The way that we know that this is working is when we're not so caught up in it. If we think about them and we don't immediately go into a fight response, or we don't immediately feel really distressed. So that's the benefit of doing this kind of work. We're not really doing the work for the other person. We're doing the work for ourselves, just like with Tonglen last week, the radical compassion. We're doing it to open our own heart and to have some ease in the situation so we can let it go. If you already have an altar, you could just imagine that you're doing it on your altar. Otherwise, you could just bring it to mind and see what that might be. It could be very simple, just a candle, some object that establishes some sense of an altar. I'm grounded, I'm present. Some people have a very visual mind. They can see a picture. It might not be, I don't have that kind of a mind. I can kind of get a sense, but it's not exactly like a picture. Bring to mind and let yourself look at that or experience that however you do. And take a few breaths, relax your body. And you might even make the motions with your hands if you're thinking about, I'm placing this rock on that altar now, or I'm placing, I'm lighting the candle. We're going to take our time as we go through this. And then bring to mind this difficulty. It could be a person relationship, a situation. Sometimes there's a difficult, challenging situation that's going on in our life, and we might do it for that. But if we're doing it for a person, you might see yourself writing their name on a piece of paper. You could make the motion with your hand as well if you wanted. And then folding the paper, or maybe you're putting it into an envelope. The real key to any practice is to allow ourselves to be here in this moment. So we're always staying regulated. So relax your body, breathe, notice that you're here. We establish that awareness that right now we're doing a practice of visualizing an altar for change. And we're imagining that we've written out their name on this piece of paper. And we're going to place it onto that altar in a moment. Let's back that up for a minute. As you're looking at the altar, notice your breath. And if you need to pause a little bit longer to get yourself settled a little bit again, because we're not working with something neutral, we're working with a difficult person or relationship. Now visualize yourself if you have a candle on the altar. Visualize yourself striking the match, lighting the candle. And as you're doing that, notice that there's a flame. Candle flames are sometimes quite still. Sometimes they move a little bit in the the breezes in the house, the movement. And then take your hand or in your mind's eye, put that envelope or that folded piece of paper onto the altar and look at it in your mind's eye. See that it's there. See what else is there as well. If it's a photograph or some kind of natural object, something that helps you to bring that to mind. As you're stepping back and taking it in visually, we surrender the situation. One of the things that's really frustrating is that difficult people don't do what would make it easier for us. 
They have their own thing going on. That's part of why they're difficult. They, maybe they don't see us. They don't honor us as a human being. Maybe they don't have the capacity for kindness or whatever that might be. What we're asking for is really the grace to surrender the situation, to see it clearly as it is, and to acknowledge that this is how it is. Maybe it's to open our view if we're feeling hard-hearted. If you've known this person for a long time, you probably have a lot of memories. Some of them, or maybe all of them, quite difficult. So you might not be able to come into a sense of ease with that person so much as I'm coming into a sense of ease and acceptance that this is a difficult situation. It's something I've been working at and I can't really make it work. And I'm going to surrender the energy of that into this altar for change. So as we're doing this practice, we're really noticing what is my resistance to that. No judgment, no shame. Difficult people are difficult, they're challenging. And often the stakes are really high. We don't want to be aggressive with ourselves around our frustration or that we haven't been able to really make a change. If that's a situation, notice that in your body. If I surrender the situation onto this altar, not forever, just to surrender with my heartfelt wish to see clearly and to be free from the suffering that I'm feeling. Maybe it's to have a more open heart to myself because I notice my heart gets kind of hard when I think about that person. If you notice that you're starting to get carried into a nervous system response, a fight, flight, or freeze response in particular, you might open your eyes, hold your own hands, do something to come back into regulation. If the image of that person or memories of it are pretty strong, you could put the images onto a frame on the other side of the room. Let your brain take it in that you're doing a practice, you're looking at an image in your mind. There's no immediate threat right now as we're doing the practice. And then look at the space on the outside of the frame. Let your eyes go around that clockwise direction a couple times and then the other direction. You might take a deep breath. If you're feeling kind of jumpy or overwhelmed in your body, you might get up and do a little bit of shaking. There's a lot of different ways that we could work with this. You keep coming back into awareness that in this moment, this is what I'm feeling. This is the thoughts in the mind. You may do a loving kindness practice. May I know some ease around this situation? May I let this go? May I surrender to the reality of this situation? May I have kindness and compassion for myself? We might offer a blessing with the intention that perhaps they could experience some open-heartedness around this. That would be very helpful if they could see the situation more clearly. And that's a little bit trickier. So as you're offering that, just let it be whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a perfect, neutral kind of a wish or a positive wish for change for them. It would be very helpful. And maybe it's someone who we really do love and care about and we honestly do wish them uh, ease to let go of this stand they've taken. To see more clearly, to have an open heart. If we're not feeling like that, we're not forcing that either. 
we could really work with. Could I see clearly? Could I open my own heart? Notice what's on your altar. Notice your body and your breath. This is a very grounded kind of a practice. We're acknowledging the truth of the situation, that we're being hurt and that we're being challenged and that we're suffering with this situation, with this difficult person, this relationship. And we're also surrendering that, in fact, we can't change that person. For whatever reason, this is the situation we're in right now. Sometimes all we can do is to let go of trying to change it and instead bringing our attention and our compassion into our own heart. If someone else is being stubborn or unkind, irrational, unfair, it's really natural for us to have a resistance to that. It's not right what's happening. Not to shame ourselves if we're feeling some kind of a nervous system response, that's normal. And can we soften our own heart, at least towards ourselves? Can we extend a wish for the blessing of seeing clearly and for an ease in our suffering? Notice that in your mind, in your heart. As we finish the visualizing of this practice, you might see yourself putting out the candle and walking away from the altar, letting it be. We have put our intention into the altar, into the practice, and now we can let it go for a bit. If it comes up in your mind, just remind yourself, it's okay. Of course, it's natural that I'm thinking about this. It's high stakes. And... Right now, I'm going to let that be. I could do something else for myself that would be nourishing, that would be helpful. And I'm going to let that be on the back burner for a while. Open your eyes. If you wanted to hold your hands or put your hands on your heart, look around, notice that you're safe in the environment that you're in. and Let yourself come to completion with the practice.